right? We are building this app where we can edit items from a list of contacts. So for example, we can select a contact, click on edit, and then we are going to go to the form to edit the contacts. But if we look at this page, we see that we have this very simple edit button in the bottom and in the original idea in our mockup, that's right here. Let me go to that screen. We have a different style. We have an image and the text right below it. And we are going to build these buttons right now. There are two approaches. The first is building button by button, inserting the image and the label, and then replicating the same approach and creating all of them. And then there is this reusable components concept that we can leverage in our app to make things easier in the future, in case we want to change the design all at once, or we want to easily create a new button with text. We are going to see the first approach first, how to create, how to insert the image and create that button that has an icon. And then we are going to transform that first one that we are going to do into a reusable component. So we can make it easier when we want to build more buttons like this. Let's go back to the app and see how it works. Let's exit the play mode and look at this part in the bottom. We want to have, have the buttons here that have an icon and then the text. Well, the first approach for who is learning would be inserting an image and then a label. And that will work already. It's not, doesn't look very nice. Doesn't look like a button, but that work. So let's do that first. In order to do this, we need to have an image of the icon. So I found this website that I'm going to leave in the description of the class. And here it says the icons right here don't need attribution. So we can just use the icons in our app. There are other websites that you need to attribute reference the icon, the, the site where you got the icon. This one says we don't need, so I'm going to use this one to make it easier. Okay, look at the, the mockup that I did here on Miro. We have a home, a WhatsApp, a telephone, and the edit icon. Let's search the home icon right now to do the home button. So I'm going to get this first one. And then I can download the SVG. We could download the PNG, but we also have SVG and the SVG occupy less space. Uh, the images are, are smaller, so it will render quicker, quicker. Okay. We could also just copy the link here. If I right click on the image and copy image link and then put in the image in the power apps, it will work, but it will be querying this website all the times. So I want to import in the app in case it changes the URL. I don't miss the icon. So I'm going to download SVG. That downloads a home icon.svg. And then if I go to the app on media, I can then import it. So add media file and upload. Okay. I'm just going to find the image here on my downloads folder, just selected in my other monitor. And the image is here, home icon SVG. If I click on it, it will come to the screen and I just can move to the bottom. Okay, let me put it right, right here. And then we have the text right below it. So it could be like inserting a label, text label, and then placing it below the image. Okay, then we just change the text to home. I'm going to decrease the font size to 18, center it, and that should work. Now, I can press shift and click in both of them. And then in the on select, we can put a navigate to navigate the home screen. So we have a key here. <laughs> home screen. Okay. Now if I click hit play, 
and click in any of those because I put in the on select of both of them. If you click in any of those, I'm going to go to the home screen. That already works and we could replicate this to all the other actions. But for the other actions, for example, we have different formulas because WhatsApp, phone and edit use different formulas. They are not a navigate, but the concept is the same. Adding the image, the text and playing with the on select. Okay, but I want to do it better. I don't want to just copy and paste, change the image in the end, the on select. Because imagine in the future, I have icons through all my app and I want to change the text, for example, the home, the text I want to be, for example, bold. So I, I need to go here and put bold and I need to do to all of them. I need to find through all my elements in the app and add it one by one. There is a better approach to do that that's using reusable components. So I can build once and then I can add it once and it will replicate to all the components in my app. Let's see how to do that. Let's keep this one here and let's start building a component. In order to do this, I can go to the tree view and we have this tab called components. It's empty right now, but I can create a new one. So I'm going to click on new components. It will create this control that's called component one with this symbol. It means it's a reusable component. And here I can insert things on it. For example, an image and a label as we did in the app. So in this case, let's insert the image again, going to media and click on home icon that will insert an image control referencing the home icon image that I just uploaded in my app. Okay, this will be a button. So we could make it the size of a button. Right now is very big. The dimensions are 6040 by 6040. Uh, let's say we could make the size of a button. Let's see what's the size of a button in our app. Let's get this button as an example. Let's make it square because usually the icons with the text are square. So it's 99 by 78. Let's say it's 90 by 90. That would be our the size of our button. That's a little bit uh, high. Let's say 90 by 70. Yes, this will be the size of our button. So if I go to components, I can make the component to have this size. Okay, let's do 90 by 70. Okay, this will be our button. And then let me resize the icon here to occupy the upper half of it. While in here in the bottom, we are going to add a label with the text. So I'm going to go to insert text label, just resize it, change the font size to let's say 16, center it, and we will have something like this that also seems like our button. Okay, but the difference now is that we can use this in the app in a lot of places. We are still not done, but let me just show how it works, how the concept works. I can go back to screens here in the bottom. Oops, I just resized too much. I can go to this plus icon. Now I will have somewhere here the components uh, classic in the classic custom and component one is the component we just created in the components tab. So if I go back to the components tab, let me just rename it. Let me call con, that means component, and then icon. It will be called con icon. Okay. Now, if I go to screens and go to insert again, classic, then we have custom, here is com icon. If I click on it, then I have this icon here that I can just use in my app. Well, I cannot resize because I didn't put formulas on it to make it resizable. We could do that further in the future, but now let's keep it simple. 
So this the buttons will always have this size. Okay, and I could insert again, for example, another com icon. See, I can keep inserting, they are going to appear here already done. Let's say now I want to change the text to make it bold. I cannot change here. I need, just need to go to the component and make the text bold. And this will reflect to all the components I inserted in my app. So if I go to screens, I can see that now the text is bold. Let's say I want to change the color of the text. So I select it and then let's say it's blue. Okay, if I go to screens, the text here is already blue. If I had a hundred in my app, all of them would change the color. Okay, now we saw the concept. That's something we can reuse through the app. Now I can put input parameters in the component so I can change the image and the text because right now it doesn't make sense. We need to have different images and texts. If I go back to the components, we have here something called custom properties. Okay, here we can set up properties that can be set in the app when we are using the component. If I click in this new custom property, I can create this custom property. Let's say B uh, in of input in texts. Usually I like to do this in just to represent that's an input. We can put the description, the text that displays in the button. It's an input property. We can have inputs and outputs, and there are other properties that we can enable in the configuration, such as actions, functions, and so on. Let's keep it simple so far. It's a text, so I click on create, and it will appear here. Okay, now if I click on it, we have the default text. In text, the default text is text, but let's say button text, just for us to see the difference. Now here in the label, instead of having a text written here, that in this case is text, we can change it to get from the property, the input property. So I can put con icon dot then we have in text. That's the property we just created. It will get the text that we pass in the input of the control of their components. The size is a little big. I'm going to decrease to 14. And also we have line height. I'm going to change just to one. Let's see. It's still big. Let's do 12. Okay. Now if you have two lines or a bigger text, we can see all of it inside the label. If I go back to the app in the screens and then select the components here in the bottom, I can see that I have here in text as a custom property. In this case, let's say it's called home. The second one will be called WhatsApp. WhatsApp. And I can have a third one that's called phone. And a fourth one that's called edits. Okay, so Ctrl C, Ctrl V, and then edits. Okay, now we were able to change the texts. We still need to be able to change the image because right now I cannot change from the app. I need to set up an input property of the for the component that will make able to change the also change the image. So I'm going to go to components and again a new custom property. I will call in button image description the image of the button button. I think I I might have misspelled. No, it's fine. Okay. And the data type, in this case, we can have different data types and it's an image. Let's click create. And then in this image here, instead of passing home icon, I'm going to pass com icon 
that's the name of the component, dot in button image. That will pass the image that the user sets in the input of the control. Okay, right now it's empty because we don't have any image passed, passed to it. If I just select the control here in the side, I can see the new property called in button image. And if I click on it, we have sample image, just this placeholder here. We don't need to put anything here in the default. So let's keep like that. And then going back to the screens where we are using the components, we can see the components here where we have this property in the custom properties that we can change and select the image. So in the in button image, if I click here in this drop down, because it's an image type, I can see the images I have in the app. In this case, it's home icon. Okay, now let's download the WhatsApp, phone, and added icons so we can use in the other uh, buttons here, in the other components. Let's go back here and search for WhatsApp. I'm just going to get this one. SVG phone um, this one SVG and then edit let's see this one like the mockup SVG okay let's just upload the three images to the app adding media just selecting here in my other screen the three at once and click and open it's going to import all of them and then now on whatsapp i will select the whatsapp icon phone i will select phone icon and edit i will select edit box icon Okay, now let me delete this one. We are not going to use it anymore. And we have this three here that we can easily change the text and even the icon. So if you want to create a new icon, we just copy, paste, and then change the properties. Okay, but now we need to put actions when the user clicks on it. So let's see we don't have the on select property for the controls we need to enable a place to put a this function what happens when we click on it because right now we cannot set so in the next class we are going to see how to enable the on select property of the components and then we are going to pass the functions to the home and to the edit to be the same as we had before and in the future we are going to see how to open it on WhatsApp and on phone, passing the function calls that we need to pass. See you in the next video.